In this chapter, we'll look at how we can adjust InDesign's personality. InDesign has a large number of preferences, and you can adjust them to your own workflow. From type to measurement units to the language of the spell checker, it's all available to customize. Are you ready? Let's go! InDesign's behavior and much of its appearance is governed by preferences. I'd like to show you where those preferences are now so that you can change InDesign to match the way that you work. I'm using a Windows computer now, and the preferences are under the Edit menu at the very bottom. On a Macintosh, they'll be under the InDesign menu under Preferences. I'd like to begin at the top with the choice of General Preferences. It's important to note that if you change the preferences with no document open, which is what we're doing right now, then this will change the behavior of the entire application when you create new documents. If you have a document open and you change some preferences, then the preferences will follow that document. Those changes won't govern the entire application every time you create a new document. Since we don't have a document open now, these changes will be persistent. Under the general setting, we see a couple of things that you might need to be aware of. First of all, InDesign by default doesn't number its pages according to the logical page numbers, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because books often have sections that have numbering like I, 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 and then followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. InDesign displays page numbers that way, the way that they are going to be read in the book, and so you can choose to change the page numbering to the logical numbers. That would be absolute numbering. I'm going to leave it, however, at section numbering. There are two more things to know about the general setting. One, you can affect the way that objects are selected when they're locked. We'll talk about locking objects later, but if this checkbox is selected, then what we find is that if you have an object that's locked on the page, then you can't select it on the page. Turns out there is an indicator on the object that's locked to help us to unlock it, but it means that when you lock an object, the object is unselectable. If you undo that checkbox right there, then you will still be able to select locked objects so that you can, for instance, copy them and then paste them someplace else. The other important feature here is the Reset All Warning Dialogs button. This button will allow you to reset all of the dialog boxes that may have a Don't Show Again checkbox on them. The next preference I'd like to look at is the interface preference. Here you'll see that we can control a number of aspects of the interface. For instance, we can choose to enable or disable multi-touch gestures. So if you have a computer with a multi-touch pad, InDesign by default is aware of things like twist and two-fingered and three-fingered swipes, that type of thing. We also can control the speed of the tooltips as to how quickly they pop up when we hover over a tool. I'd like to leave them on fast because then I can see them quickly. I don't have to wait for them to pop up. We can also change our default behavior for panels when they pop up. Currently, our tools are in a single column, but we could also change them to a double column or a single row. I'll leave them in single column mode. We can also choose to open all of our documents in tabs or to open them in individual windows. The default behavior, again, is to open them in tabs, and we'll leave them that way. The last setting here is about live screen drawing, and you see that you have some choices here. The default behavior is to immediately show any changes on the screen. I can delay that, though, for performance. So if you have a slower computer, you may choose to delay the live screen drawing. 